everyone. Welcome back. My name is Michelle and I talk books. I was so excited to talk about this book. I just finished it. I was getting ready and I was finishing it up and everybody here knows how much I love Lila Ibrahim. I'm going to put below. I have talked to her at three or four times, but this is her newest book. It came out June 1st up on your screen, Golden Poppies. I couldn't wait to read her book. I've been following this story. I will read anything she writes. She knows that. She knows how much I love her. We have had some of the best talks together and it makes me kind of sad that I'm not talking to her about this book because of my schedule. I love her and I can't wait to talk about this book of hers. If I was sitting here talking to her right now, I'd be like, Lila, can you plan God's timing. Her stories have been out there. This is nothing new. Nobody writes about slavery and the times of after the Civil War like she does. She never ceases to amaze me with her knowledge. It's crazy. You feel like you're right there, but we're going to, you know, I have way more to say about Lila, but let's just start up on your screen. 304 pages, historical fiction, post-Civil War. The story starts off in 1894. What I love about her books is that she has found a place in history that is just kind of been glazed over. And I have told her this before many times in school when you're learning about the Civil War, you go right from Civil War to World War I. Well, what happened? What happened in between? How did the country come together? How did we get over the Civil War. That's why I love her books. I have read books of other authors who have tried to cover this time period, but Lila, nobody does it like you. Sometimes I just close their books because I see an agenda. I see propaganda. I see something that you don't put in your book. You tell the story and we can tell as readers how well you know this without shoving it back, 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 back. You know what I'm talking about, readers. I keep going back to her because I just finished it and I don't have her to talk to, so I just keep talking about her. But I'm gonna tell you my five favorite things about this book. I have so many others. I only ever say five. Here we go. Number five, historical fiction. I love anything historical fiction. She knows that, everybody knows that, but I always have to say it again and again. Stick it in front of me, historical fiction, I'm gonna read it. There I am, 1894. If I could read historical fiction like all day, I probably would. It's just how I am. I might stick something in every once in a while, but I could read historical fiction all the time. Number four, getting into the main characters now, Jordan Wallace. She is a middle-aged black teacher. She lives in Chicago. We know her a little bit. If you read her other books, which I will talk about in just a little bit, I wanna put up some pictures that I found of the 1800s, the late 1800s in Chicago, so we can get a little bit of a feel of what we're talking about here. Chicago was kind of an easy place for blacks to go to after the Civil War. You'll find that in history. I've, I've read about it and a lot of other books too, Chicago was easy to, for them to go to. They were more accepted. Of course, the North is gonna be the easier place for them to go to, to have a life. And Lila covers that in her books so well, not just this book, but her other books too. I love Jordan. I've always loved her character. She, <laughs> when I read her, I feel, well, now I feel like I seriously know this woman. I feel like I know her heart and soul. And that's another thing about Lila's writing is you get, to, even if you haven't read her other books, by the end of this book, you're like, I just want to keep Jordan. Can I keep Jordan? That's who I would pick. I want to keep Jordan as my friend. It's, you know, but I think I've said that to her several times too. Then we go to number three, the other main character who I love to, Sadie Wagner. She's the white wife of a German businesswoman. She lives in Oakland, California. I am going to put some pictures, I hopefully up on your screen that you're looking at right now from the late 1800s. The thing that I love what Lila does is that when she's bringing in the suffrage movement, it seems like you are there. And we are in 2020. We are more than a century ahead. 
And yet when you hear the topics they're talking about, you're like, that was a hundred years ago. Let that sink in. It's kind of depressing, actually. That's what I was thinking. I mean, between race relations and then the women's movement, it's kind of really depressing to hear what the women were saying a hundred years ago. Then again, with this story and how she brings these characters together, it also is heartwarming that it was 30 years after the Civil War. Women, Lila, I'm looking at you. You brought women together and I love that. They were your strong characters. They're always your strong characters, but I love how the women rise above. Sadie, you're gonna love her. I loved her too. She was awesome. I, I, you know, you can relate to Sadie on so many levels and you gotta read the book. I'm not gonna tell you anymore. Number two, I'm going to give you my favorite quote. You have to understand that when you are reading one of Lila's books, you are going to get quote after quote. Every chapter, she will give you a quote that you, makes you go, whoa, I'm writing that down. Whoa, like I don't know anyone else that I use quotes from more than Lila. She's amazing. Lila, you never cease to amaze me. I just want to know, do you just sit down and write the quotes and then write the story around your quotes? I don't know. But here we go. My favorite one. You set your fear right next to your hope until you know which one is the truth. When I read that, like head to toe, goosebumps. Ugh, God. <laughs> and I picked from, I had like five top five quotes. I should do that. I should do that for her books. My top five quotes from this book. And then this one, I just, I was like, yeah, this is the, this is the one that just, I had to take a breath and just let it sit there. <sighs> Lila. Ugh. My number one reason is because it's Lila, because I'm going to read every one of your books. You know that when I see that you have another book coming out, I do a happy dance. I just can't get over how God has used you to get to the heart of these issues that are still plaguing us, that we're still going through. And like I said, the timing of this could not have been any better. I see books, I see people saying, read this book, read this book for race relations, read this. I'm telling you, read Lila's books. They are historical fiction and they are fiction, but she knows her stuff. And if you wanna know how we got from here to there, or from there to here, however you want to say it. And I love that I did not turn my phone off. If you want to get there, if you want to know, just to know some history so you can put some context into why, why we are going through this, why we are still going through this. You know, it's Lila. I, I have no words. <laughs> I really don't. As I was reading this this week, I just kept, that's all I kept thinking about is like, wow, God has really used you. And it makes me so happy to know that, how he has used your knowledge way before this even started. I remember our conversations talking about it and us being like, well, you know, it's getting better. It's getting better. I remember those conversations. And then like now happens and we're like, whoa, we are so blinded sometimes. Sometimes we, we just hope. I think it's hope. We can still have hope. We can have hope, even though it's depressing to think about these issues being talked about a hundred years ago, it also is hope because we are survivors and we know how to do this and we know how to overcome. Lila, I love you. You are amazing. Let me, let me tell you something. We're going to go through her books one at a time. You've got to read her books. You want to read this one first? Fine. Have at it. Read this one first. First, she has Living Right, which came out in 2016. Amazing. Then she starts in the historical fiction. We got Yellow Crocus in 2014, then Mustard Seed in 2017, and Paper Wipe in 2018, and then this one in 2020. Like, boom, boom, boom. But I want to tell you guys, I talk about this all the time, and I'm going to tell you again, Lila, because I'm sure you don't watch each and every one of my videos. I tell people all the time when they say, what author has changed your life? It's you. Because to this day, from the day that I read Mustard Seed until today, I put mustard, I have them where I get dressed and I will stick two or three mustard seeds in my pants, in my jeans, whatever I'm wearing. Because during the day, so many times thoughts come up into your head. 
and you're like, can I do this? Can I do this? What is it going to take? And especially right now, right? I mean, everything we've been through this year, I touch one of those mustards, I put my hand in my pocket and I remember, I just have to have faith as large as a mustard seed. And I can't stop doing it. I thought that I would not do it. Like I thought, that, oh, you'll forget, but it's right there. And I do it every day because then I realize, oh, it only has to be, look how tiny the, these are. I have three of them in my fingers right now. And that's all I have to do is have three of them in my fingers to realize that I don't have to have huge faith. It only has to be that big. And then I smile and I think of you and it gets better. I'm going to end this by saying this quote one more time and putting it up on your screen because I think it's so important. I want to read it a lot. I'm going to put it up on my mirror so that I can see this when I need it. You set your fear right next to your hope until you know which one is the truth. And it's hope, right? Always. Hope always wins. So thank you, Lila, for giving us another book in the exact time that we need it. Below, I'm going to put your Indie Bound because you guys, I think most of you can go to a bookstore, not me yet, soon, hopefully. I'll put Amazon so you can get it. It just came out June 1st. And let me tell you something else. It already has 278 Amazon reviews. So I'm not the only one who loves her. Just in case you think she, you know, I'm the her, her own private fan club. No, she has tons of fans. And I want to see her have millions and millions more. I'm going to make it my goal that everybody know who she is. Have a nice day, everyone. Until my next video.